Hello and welcome to this tutorial on using the TI Inspire to manipulate lists of numbers. We're going to take a look at a couple of functions that the calculator has that will make dealing with the lists easier and we'll see how we can use them to represent a situation. So let's get started and take a look at what a list of numbers is and how the calculator thinks of those. So I'm going to come over to this calculator page and I'm going to make a list of numbers. This list of numbers can be anything. We start with a curly brace and then we put our numbers inside the curly braces with commas. So I'm just uh, picking some numbers here. These are maybe the scores that I have on my first five concept tests. Now this is a list and uh, if I type this in the calculator is just going to print it back out to me because I haven't asked it to do anything with this list. I want to be able to do things with this list without having to retype it every time so I'm going to store it to a variable. So we do that by pushing control and then the var key that's above the 9 and that'll give you an arrow and then I'm going to name this list A for shortness. And now whenever I type the letter A in an expression the calculator will insert this list in place of the A. So let's do some things with this list. What if I wanted to double every number in my list and have a new list, but now it would be 4, 8, 2, 6, 10. Well, it's easy to do that. You just do 2 times A, and the calculator will generate a new list that is everything that has been doubled. Now this doesn't change the value of A, it makes a new list, so A is still that original set of numbers. So that means that we can treat the list A as a set of domain values. If I have a function that will operate on, on a domain, maybe my function is uh, 4x plus 3. Now if I, type, if I have my calculator evaluate this, it's going to complain because it doesn't know what values to put in for x. If I change the x to an a, you can tell that the calculator knows what a is supposed to be because it is bold then the calculator is going to evaluate this expression for each of the values in the list A, and it gives me my outputs. Now we're going to take a look at a couple of commands that will make our life a little bit easier when we are dealing with these things. So let's uh, leave the calculator for a moment and see what these commands look like. So the first command is the sequence command. The sequence command lets us define a list without having to type in all the numbers in the list. We type in an expression and tell it where to begin, where to end, and it makes the list for us. The command looks like this, seq, and then parentheses. And the first thing in the list is an expression. This will have a variable in it. Here, my expression is 2x. The next item is the name of the variable that we want to put values in for. In this case, it's x. It's usually going to be x. And then we have two numbers after that, the starting number and the ending number. And what this is going to do is it's going to make a list. And it's going to put numbers in from the starting number to the ending number in place of the variable into our expression. So what the calculator will do is it will create this list. So first, my starting number is 1. So first it does 2 times 1. Then for the next value, it does 2 times 2, and then 2 times 3, 2 times 4, all the way up until the last number, 2 times 5. And so the calculator will give you the list 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So the sequence command is really useful for us because it, it gives us this list. I didn't have to type out five numbers. I had to type out quite a bit more than I would have if I had typed out these five numbers, but consider what a time saver this is if my ending number was 100. That would save me a whole lot of time and it would keep me from making silly mistakes. So the sequence command has a very common use when we're using lists on our calculator and that is to generate the set of integers between the start value and the end value. To get the set of numbers between 1 and 7 inclusive, maybe I'll want to use those as domain values into some type of function, but I don't want to type all of those out. The way that sequence command looks is it'll follow the same rules. The only thing that is odd and trips some people up is that the expression is just the variable. So the rules are the same. This first term is the expression, which is just x. 
The second term is the variable that we want to put numbers in for, and then my starting number and my ending number. Let's see how the sequence command will work on our calculator. Okay, so here we are back in the, in the calculator, and let's say I want to make a list of days in the month of, I don't know, let's say March. I could type out a list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, but I don't want to type all of that. It would be too easy to leave a number out or forget something. So I'm going to uh, use the sequence command to help me out. So I'm going to do the sequence. My expression is just x. Which variable am I going to use? x. And March has 31 days. So we start with the first day. We end on the 31st day. And I'm going to store this to the variable, uh, let's say March. And you'll see this generates this big giant list for me without me having to type anything out. Pretty cool, huh? Now there are a uh, few functions that operate on lists. Um, if I have an equation or a function that will depend on the day of the month, then I can just type that using the variable of the list and it will give me a list of all of the outputs. So if I want to uh, square the day number of, of the month, I can just type in March and then hit the X squared key and that will square all of those and give me a list of all of the squares. So that can be a really useful way of um, converting uh, domain values into range values. One thing that I might want to do is I might want to make a function that uh, tells me how much money my lemonade stand will make. Suppose each day in March my lemonade stand makes $5 more than the previous day. And let's say that on the first day I make $3. Then my expression would for the number of or the amount of money I make would be 3 plus March minus 1 times 5. The reason why we have to do March minus 1 is because the first day of March is March 1st. But we don't want to add on $5. We want that day to be $3. So we have to shift all of the day values down 1. You'll notice that this looks a lot like the expression that we had when we were studying arithmetical sequences. Now what this list is, it's, it means on March 1st I made $3, on March 2nd I made $8, on March 3rd I made $13. So each day I'm getting more and more profitable. Maybe I want to find out how much money I've earned all together up until each day. So for the first day I would only earn $3. For the next day, I would earn the $3 from day one plus the $8 from day two, it should be 11. And then the day after that, I earned $13, so my total amount so far would be 11 plus 13 is uh, 24. Well, there's a command for this that is very useful. Let's take a look at that. Okay, here we are. This is called the cumulative sum command. So this is going to be the total amount so far in the list. The cumulative sum command takes a list and it makes a new list where each value is the sum of all the values in the input up to that item. So if my list A looks like this, 1, 3, 4, 7, then the cumulative sum of A, which is cum sum, gives me the list that is 1, and then 1 plus 3, and then 1 plus 3 plus 4, and then 1 plus 3 plus 4 plus 7, or 1, 4, 8, and 15. So here's one way that we can use the cumulative sum command. Suppose that I've got a list called daily pay that contains how much you have to pay me on each day for your math lesson. So each item in the list is how much you pay on that day. Maybe we want to know how much you have to pay me up to that point. So the cumulative sum of daily pay 
is going to be a list where each number is the total amount that you've paid me up until that point. So that's the cumulative sum command. I think you may find it useful. Let's take a look at how we can operate on our lists and see the lists in a way that's a little bit better. Let's go back to the calculator. Here we are back with the calculator. Now the list that we have when the calculator gives me this list, that's perfectly fine, but it goes off the screen pretty quickly and it's kind of hard to read and tell which, which one is which. So the way that we'll deal with that on our calculator is with a new page. So let's add a new page by pushing control and then the dock key. And we're going to choose lists and spreadsheets. Now we've used this before, but uh, we, I don't think we've used all of the features of this. The top row in this spreadsheet is a place for me to put um, variable names for a place for me to name my lists. So maybe list A is going to be uh, the list of the day number. I'll call it day. And maybe list B is going to be daily pay. And maybe list C will be cumulative pay. Well, that's a lot to type. Maybe that we should just call that cum pay. The second line lets me define an expression for it. We can go down here and type all of these. You could type one, two, three, four for day, but that's not an efficient use of your time. We'll use the sequence command to define this list for us. So sequence, my expression is x, my variable will be x. Let's start at 1 and go up to 31. And that fills in my day all the way up to 31. No surprises there, but it does make it nice and easy to, to see that list. For the daily pay, let's say I have some equation that tells me how much you have to pay me on that day. Now that might be something that you have to figure out without somebody specifically telling you, figure out the equation. But that's okay, you're smart people, you can do it. To get my list for daily pay, I just write that equation, but in place of the day number, I'll put the list day. So maybe you have to pay me $100 on the first day, and then each day you pay me $20 more than the previous day. So the first day you'd pay $100, the second day you'd pay $120. So I would write that equation like this, day minus 1, because we have to shift it back, times 20. And this gives me a list all the way up until 31. If I want to know how much you have to pay me altogether for the cumulative pay, then I can use the cumulative sum command and put in daily pay. And that'll tell me that on the first day, you will have paid me altogether $100. The second day, you will have paid me altogether $220. The next day, you would have paid me $360 altogether, and then $520, and so on. Having these lists laid out in a table like this makes it easy to explore. For example, if we go to Menu, Data, and Quick Graph, we can take a look at how our data might look on a graph. Now, we would want our day variable to be down at the bottom. And let's say we want to see our cumulative pay in terms of our day. Come on, take a look at that. There's our data. Isn't that handy? So that's all I want to take a look at when it comes to uh, playing with these lists on our calculators. On your homework, you'll need to fill out some tables on your paper. But I'd also like you to create a file on your calculator where you have these lists. You shouldn't have to calculate all of these all the way up to 31 by hand. That's not efficient use of your time. Use your calculator and your technology to help you with that. All right, I hope this helps. Good luck, keep up the hard work. It will pay off.